Okay, we can start the lecture now, but uh, I have to wait because there is a slowness in the system. Uh, the files I want to load uh, are still uh, busy. Okay, I want to welcome you all to uh, Math 113 class. Uh, probably you know that we are going to study calculus this semester for her throughout 14 weeks. The files that are used to be here are not seem to be coming. I will close the session and reopen again immediately. Okay, the file came here, but I cannot share it to you. Okay, everything is fine now. Okay, let's restart. I again welcome you all to MAT 113 course. And uh, as I said before, we are going to study calculus. And we are going to use uh, the textbook Thomas Calculus, 14 Global Edition in SI units. SI units is the metric units. The online lectures will start on Monday. October 5 and of course we tried to start it on Monday that there was a problem with the microphone and then we'll have two online lectures each week it's Monday between 9 and 11 in the morning and Wednesday in between 10 and 12. During the first semester uh, we will study the first seven chapter of our textbook I have uploaded the syllabus. You can download the syllabus and see uh, what are the uh, topics that we are going to cover, chapters and subchapters. Okay, the syllabus is uploaded on con course controller of All Learn Blackboard. Now, during the online lectures, we are going to use slides like this. Uh, because we don't have much other choice. These are PowerPoint slides that explain the topics 
and these slides are based on my lecture notes. Uh, now I have uploaded the slides of first two chapters. That will take us for uh, two or three weeks at least. And as we proceed, I will upload the PowerPoint slides of the other chapters too. There is one important uh, rule that I would like to share with you. During the online lectures, your cameras and microphones should be closed. If you want to ask a question, you can open your microphone and ask your question, or you can use uh, raising hands option that you see on the uh, panel. Or another option is uh, you can use the chat room uh, and write down the question you have on the chat room. I will be looking at the chat room uh, all the time. Now this is, uh, this first slide is the copy of the announcement that I send you about this course. I want to put it in the slide so you can always check there will be some rules that uh, some of the things we have to do is written on this uh, slide. Now the preparation for this course is important. If you're taking the course for the first time, you have to buy the textbook, Thomas Calculus 14 Global Edition in SI units. This is published by Pearson Education Incorporation. Make sure that you buy the textbook with an access code. If you want the other option, you can only buy the e-textbook with the access code. So there are two options. The second option, if you are living outside Turkey, uh, the shipment be, could be pretty expensive. So you can just buy the e-textbook and access code. Now I send you the links to purchase the textbook with access code. That's hard copy with access code. And then there's another link to buy the e-textbook with access code. Uh, did you receive these links and you uh, started your purchase? No answers? Can everybody hear me? Okay, so you can use these links to buy your textbook and access code. Now, homeworks uh, will be assigned uh, at the internet platform called MyLab and Mastering. This platform is prepared by Pearson Incorporation and it's based on our textbook. You will have seven homeworks in total in this semester. Uh, there is a difference this year. My lab and mastering platform is integrated into All Learn Black, uh, Blackboard. I have uploaded the link uh, to the contents uh, course contents folder. The name of this link is My Lab Math Course Home. So you can use this link uh, to access uh, My Lab and Mastering platform and then you can solve your homeworks uh, in that platform. Now, for the, when you do it for the first time, you should use this link and the access code that comes with your book in order to create an account in this platform. After creating your account, you will be automatically registered to the course which is named as MAT 112, 2020 and 2021 DE. That's my initials. This is the course that I open at my lab and mastering platform. And the course code of this code is courses RDAM 9946. However, uh, after you open your account uh, in this uh, platform by using the link in Blackboard, you will be automatically registered to this uh, course 
and you will see the homeworks that I put on this platform. Now, the students who repeat these courses, I mean, MAT 1 and MAT 2, actually, who already have an account for these courses, do not have to buy books, but they have to activate their accounts. And they, in, for this case, they should contact Pearson uh, from the chat address, yardim.pearson.com.ar. At this address, you will find the form for students who want to reactivate their accounts. You should fill out this form by providing your usernames and email addresses, which you used previously at this platform. Then send the form by clicking the send button. After the extension of your account, this may take some time because as far as I'm informed, the accounts are reactivated at each Friday. So you should uh, uh, get in contact and, contact and send your form. Then uh, your account will be reactivated. And then you will use your username and password to get registered to my course uh, at this platform. You should use the link uh, all the time. I mean, you should use Blackboard to get access to my lab and mastering. Are there any questions uh, about uh, this? You didn't receive the link. Uh, okay. I will resend both links today. Probably you were uh, registered yet, Fatima Zahra. So I will send both links today again by email. Uh, and uh, then you can use these links. Any other questions about this? Okay, let's continue with the announcements. Now the grading. Uh, the grading is about how you work or be evaluated this semester. We will have two midterm exams and one final exam and homeworks in this course. All these are for the evaluation of your work. The contribution to your letter grade of midterms are 20% each. The contribution of the final exam is 40%. The average of the homeworks will be counted as 20%, but there's a condition. Your average of the exams must be greater than or equal to two. Otherwise, it will be counted as zero. So it's important that you solve your homeworks uh, as much as you can. Now, the, we will said that uh, there will be two midterm exams, but these midterms will be distributed throughout the semester. Uh, to be exact, after we finish chapter two, and each chapter, after we finish each chapter, we'll have a quiz of two or three questions. So in total, you will have six quizzes. The average of the first three quizzes will be counted as your first midterm. The average of the last three quizzes will be counted uh, as your second uh, midterm. Now, all the questions asked in the exam are chosen from your textbooks and from the homework problems. I will inform you about the time and the date of the quizzes. The time and date of the final exam will be announced by the Dean's office. Okay, uh, the name of the link is kitabsatishionline.com uh, dash he dash thomas dash thomas dash calculus dash in dash si dash units dash p14 this is the link to buy the hard copy uh, of the textbook and the access card so the hard copy of the textbooks will be sent to you by uh, a shipment 
Uh, if you are in Turkey, this should not be very expensive. But if you are outside Turkey, the ship might cost a lot of time. Uh, so it's uh, best in this case to buy the e-test textbook with the help of Ahmed is some who have chemistry at 11. My lecture ends 12, I know, but the lectures are uh, recorded. You can uh, watch them later on. So there shouldn't be any problem. Okay, if you have any other questions, do not hesitate to ask because uh, this is the end of the announcement. I put these slides uh, on uh, the slides of chapter one because these are the basic rules, uh, basic things to do for your course. And uh, that should be available to you all the time. If you don't have any questions, we will now start the lecture. This was about the announcement. Okay, chapter one is, of your textbook, of course, is about pre-calculus. Uh, this is basically a review of your high school mathematics. So everything I uh, talk about for in this chapter uh, will be uh, similar to what you have learned in high school about mathematics. But uh, it's necessary to make this review and we do it all the time when we start this course. Okay, we will stop. We, uh, we will start with number systems and the real one. Let me just enlarge this a little bit. Can you see clearly? Uh, the slides. Okay, the first first number systems that the humans use is natural numbers. Actually, these are the numbers that we use for counting objects. That starts with one, two, three. So that uh, goes on like this. And this is the probably the first the number system that the human beings used in history. Later on, it was necessary to add zero to the number system and negative numbers. And then we obtained integers. So that's sort of the second number system used by the humans. And uh, the notation for the integers is uh, bold C. The notation for natural numbers is bold N. Okay, after uh, integers, people realize that uh, integers are not enough because if you have an apple, if you cut it in two, how are you going to express that number? And then uh, rational, the rational numbers come into place. So it's one and a half apple or two thirds of a pear or something like that. But rational numbers or ratio of integers. There's a special property of uh, rational numbers. If you want to write them in decimal notation, either uh, they end with an infinite string of zeros, like minus three over four. And that's in decimal notation, that's minus 0 0.75 and then zeros. So there's an infinite zeros uh, after this. Or uh, if you consider 23 divided by 11, that's 2.090909 and 09, a block of digits repeat itself infinitely. And in short notation, in short notation, we write it like this. 2.0909 has a bar on it. So that means 09 repeats itself infinitely. 
Okay, so these are the properties of rational numbers. So any rational number when written in decimal notation either ends with infinity strings of zero or a block of digitals repeating itself infinity over and over. Okay, like 23 over 11. Now, then uh, real numbers come into picture. The definition of real numbers is all numbers which can be expressed as decimals are called numbers. And the notation for real numbers is bold i. The notation for rational numbers, as you can see here, is bold q. Now, for instance, 1 over 5 is a real number. It's a rational number at the same time, but it's a real number. As you can see here, natural numbers is a subset of integers, and integers is a subset of rational numbers. And we will see that rational numbers is a subset of real numbers. 1 over 7, as you can see, that's a rational number, and you can see a block of uh, digitals repeating itself infinitely. This block is 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. It repeats itself infinitely because this is a rational number. Actually, we are going to see the proof of this fact uh, when we study Max 2. You can show that any infinite repeating block of digitals can be written as a rational number as the ratio of two integers. Okay, minus one over three, of course, is uh, both a rational number and a real number. Here, as you see, uh, three repeats itself infinitely. If you divide one by three, at 0 0.3333 and goes up to infinity like this. Now, square root of two is a real number, too. And it does not repeat itself. Uh, I mean, there's no block of uh, digitals which repeat itself with square root of uh, two. So that's sort of different from rational numbers. Now you can add, as you know, subtract, multiply, and divide real numbers with another real number, of course, except zero, because a real number divided by zero is not a real number. Uh, but if uh, in the denominator you have a non-zero real number, that's okay. So you can create in this way by adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, you can create other real numbers uh, too. So the real numbers are close under addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, uh, of course, except zero, division by zero. Uh, so uh, they are close under these operations. You don't get another uh, uh, number. You just get a real number. OK, there is also a geometric definition uh, for the real numbers. It's the real nine, one, which have no gaps and no holes. Okay, let me show the real nine. You have a line here. You put zero at some point. On the right, you have positive real numbers. On the left, you have negative real numbers. That's called the real nine. Now, the geometric definition of the real numbers is that every point on this line corresponds to a real number. And conversely, every real number corresponds to a point uh, on this line. And actually, the real number uh, tells you, I mean, if this is point two, it tells you the distance from the origin, or that's zero. So the distance uh, from the origin of this is two. Uh, but minus 2 has the same distance from the origin, too. So in order to show the distance, you have to take the absolute value of minus 2. Okay, so as we said, 
the geometric definition of real numbers is the real line. And uh, that means that every point on the real line corresponds to a real number. And for every real number, uh, there's a point on the real line. And we call this a coordinate, actually, because when I say two, I'm talking about the distance from zero two units of distance. So actually the real number gives you the coordinate of that line. It tells you where the number is on the real line. It's two units away from zero. Or when you say minus two, it's the same thing, that's the coordinate. I mean, the distance is two units, but on the left, on the left of zero because it's minus. Okay, so let's now look at the properties of real numbers. There are algebraic properties. We talked about it. Real numbers are closed under addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, except by division zero. They are not closed if you divide them by zero. You get something which is not a real number. But all the uh, other cases, the real numbers are closed under addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. That means you create another real number if you multiply two real numbers, if you add two real numbers, if you subtract one real number from another, if you multiply a real number with another real number, you again get a real number. Uh, that's the algebraic property of the real numbers. Now, the second property we are going to talk about is order properties. The set of real numbers is an ordered set. What does that mean? That means if you have two real numbers, A and B, and if A is not equal to B, then you have only two possibilities. Either A is greater than B or B is greater than A. So that's called an ordered set, okay? So if you have two real numbers, and if these two real numbers are not equal to each other, then you have only two options. Now, furthermore, these rules also hold. Okay, if A is less than B, you add any real number, C, to both A and B, then this inequality doesn't change. Or if you subtract a real number, C, from A and B at the same time, the inequality doesn't change either. Now, if A is less than B, and you multiply these real numbers by a positive real number, C, then A times C is less than times C. Now, if A is B less than B, and C is a negative real number, then the uh, inequality reverses if C is negative because then you take the negative of uh, A and multiply with C, and uh, these are negative numbers. For instance, suppose A is one, B is two. So we know that two is greater than one. But if you multiply this by minus one, minus two is here, minus one is here. So minus two less than minus one, okay? So that's what this uh, inequality tells us. If A is greater, one over A is also greater than zero. That's uh, an obvious rule. If A is less than B, uh, then one over B is less than one over A. Why? Because you divide one here with a greater number, so you get a smaller number. Here you divide one by a lesser number, so one over A is bigger than one over B. Okay, these are the basic order uh, properties of uh, real uh, numbers. Let's continue. As I said, this is sort of a review of your high school mathematics. Now there's the completeness property, which is important. Now what is completeness of real numbers? This is, it tells us that 
there are no holes and gaps on the real line. As I said before, every point on the real line corresponds to a real number, and for every real number, there's a point on the real line. That's completeness property. Okay? So each coordinate point corresponds to a real number. That's what we call completeness property. Now let's look at uh, other number systems we have seen. Na for instance, natural numbers are not close under subtraction and division. I mean, if you divide a natural number by another number, you'll probably get a rational number. So it's not close under uh, division and subtraction. Integers are not close under division because when you divide integer by another integer, you don't get uh, an integer again. For certain cases, you might get an integer, but for all the cases, you don't get an integer. Rational numbers have the same algebraic properties of real numbers because when you multiply, divide, add, and subtract rational numbers, you also get a rational number. Uh, or you multiply. They have the same ordering properties as the real numbers, but they don't have completeness property. Because there are points on the real line which does not correspond to a rational number. Now, the first uh, number that, does, that is not a rational number we call them irrational number, is pi. And pi, you can see the writing of it, and it goes on to infinity like that. It has no repetition of any block of integers. It does not repeat itself. Square root of this two is the same thing. These are called irrational numbers, which means that you cannot express these numbers as ratio of integers to integers. That's not possible. Because there are no repeating blocks here. So that's the most important difference of real numbers from the rational numbers. And as you can see, uh, in between any rational numbers, we will find an irrational number. You can change one of the digits, one or a couple of the digits, and you just disturb the repeating block of uh, uh, that. Okay, so uh, that's the most important uh, difference of the real numbers from all the other number systems we have uh, talked about up to now. Okay, so. There are irrational numbers like a pi and a square root of two, but there is a point which corresponds to an irrational number on the real line two. Okay, so how do we express the subset of real numbers? Now, if you recall from high from your high school knowledge, a set is a collection of objects and the objects are called the elements of the set. So if S is set, then A is in S, means that A belongs to the set S. Uh, the other notation is this. This notation, uh, A does not belong to S. This notation means A belongs to S. We might be using these type of notations along this course. If S and T are sets, this notation is the union of these sets that uh, the elements of S and the elements of T are together. They are in, in one big set. That's the union. Now, the intersection of S with T means that the elements in the intersection uh, belong to S and T at the same time. Now, we had the sets of real numbers can be uh, shown in various different ways. 
This is one way of showing S is consists of six uh, natural numbers or six integers like this. That's plus and minus, and it's also. Or you can uh, express a set of real numbers like this X such that X is in Z, that's rational number, and between minus six and uh, plus six. So there are different ways of. Uh, subsets of real numbers, uh, but the most important one that you are going to use are intervals. So what is an interval? A subset of real numbers containing all the real numbers between any of its two elements is called an interval. So you have two elements and which are not equal to each other uh, and any real number uh, which is greater than one of them and less than the other. So geometrically, uh, you can write S is like this. That means S is greater than or equal to 3 and less than or equal to 7. So 3 is in this set and 7 is in this set. And all real numbers be 3 and 7, since uh, real numbers is an ordered set, are in your set. Or you can express like this. Well, S could be all real numbers X so that X is less than or equal to 7. So that tells, gives you the all real numbers less than or equal to 7. Now, this notation, I mean, this interval is line segment, actually. On the real line, that's a line segment. And uh, and a finite interval. And this one is infinite interval. So a finite interval is said to be closed. That's the notation uh, terminology we use if it contains both of the endpoints. It's set half open if it contains one of the endpoints only. And it's called open if it does not contain any endpoint. Okay, so that's the notation that we are going to use frequently. We will be working with intervals uh, on our course. Now, in parentheses, AB means that X is greater than H, strictly greater than H, strictly less than B. Now, if I write this with a bracket like uh, on B, A is strictly greater than A, but less than or equal to B. So this uh, interval is uh, open, this is half open, or if I have a bracket on A, it's again half open, and A, B, that's this set, is closed, because it contains both endpoints. Now, if I write this, you know that infinity is not a real number, so anything less than infinity is a real number, so that's an open set. A is less than X. X is greater than A. So that's the whole real numbers up to infinity. Infinity is not included. Or if I write this, now this is open, but if I put a bracket here, then we say it's closed because of the infinity here. I cannot close this part because infinity is not a real number. So I can only close this part, so that's a closed set. Now, minus infinity B, that's an open set. B is not included. But if I put a bracket on B, I can close it because B is a real number, then it's a closed set. Now, minus infinity and plus infinity means that it's the set of all real numbers. This set is both open and closed because you cannot close this end. Minus infinity is not a real number. You cannot close this end either. Plus infinity is not a real number. Okay, so make sure that you recall these uh, notation uh, and terminology because we will be frequently using uh, in this course. 
Okay, let's uh, go over some examples for solving inequalities or inequalities. Now, if you have an inequality uh, like this one, 2x minus 1 is less than x plus t. So what are, what are the solution set for this inequality? And we can use all the properties uh, to solve this inequality. So I add one to each side, you have two x less than x plus four. Now let's subtract x from both sides. You have x is less than four. So minus infinity four, that's an open interval, and it's an infinite interval, is the solution set of this inequality. Let's go over another example. It's just to uh, warm you up about uh, mathematics. Okay, I have this inequality, minus x over 3 is less than 2x plus 1, and I want to find the solution set. So what I do is I multiply by plus 3, both sides, so the inequality does not change. I have minus x here, and 6x plus 3 here. Now I can add x to both sides, so I have 0 is greater than 7x plus 3. And that means minus 3 is less than 7x. And x is greater than minus 3 over 7. So that's minus 3 over 7 infinity. That's an open interval uh, also. OK, let's look at another example. Uh, let me just enlarge this a little bit. Okay, that's much better. Okay, we have 6 over x minus 1 greater than 5 is our inequality. We, find, we want to find the solution set. Now, it is clear that x must be greater than 1. Why it is clear? Why it is clear? Because if x is less than 1, the denominator is negative, the numerator is positive, so that's a negative real number. Negative real number cannot be greater than 5. So we know that x must be necessarily greater than 1. So I, what I do is uh, greater than 1, so x minus 1 is a positive number. So I multiply by x minus 1, both sides. So 6 is greater than 5x minus 5. So I add 5 to each side. 11 is greater than 5x. And that gives me 11 over 5 is greater than x. Now x is greater than 1 and less than 11 over 5. Okay. Now, this is strict uh, inequality, strictly greater than 1. It cannot be equal to 1 back because it's division by 0. Now. So, uh, the solution set for this is 1 not included. 11 over 5 is included because that's uh, greater than or equal. So, 11 over 5 is included in your solution set. But one is not included. Anything greater than one, and less than or equal to eleven or five, uh, is in the solution set. There's somebody who says that uh, my knowledge is coming very low. But I think everybody can hear me loud and clear. Why don't you try to connect again? Okay, so, uh, but there's nothing I can do about it because I can see my voice uh, going up to 
uh, it's hundred percent open. My noise is hundred percent open, as I checked from. Uh, Okay, try to reconnect again, or refresh the page. Let's continue with the next uh, slide. Let's define the value and absolute value is and uh, that's uh, a function uh, that we are, and we are going to see. Now, the absolute value of A is defined like this. It's equal to A if A is a positive uh, real number, greater than or equal to zero. It's equal to minus A if A is a strictly less than zero. Okay, that's the definition of the absolute value. Actually, absolute value of A shows you your distance from uh, the origin. Okay, so if A is two, then your distance from the origin or zero is two. If is minus two, you take the absolute value, minus to minus two is two. So that shows your distance from the origin. So the properties are minus is equal to A, that's obvious. A times B is equal to absolute the absolute value of a times b is equal to the multiplication of absolute value of a and absolute for division of and is equal is less than or equal to absolute value of a plus absolute value of b now if x absolute value of a uh, x is equal to a the solution for this is either a is plus a or minus a and six if absolute value of x is less than a less than or equal to a that means x is greater than or equal to minus a and less than or equal to plus a uh, that's that and if you look at the real number line, absolute value of x less than a means if x is a positive number, x less than a. If it's a negative number, it's greater than minus a. Okay. And seven is x is absolute value of x greater than a, greater than or equal to a, means that either a is less than x. If x is a positive number, that means a is less than x. Or if x is a negative number, that means x is less than minus a. Okay? Because there are two options here. x could be positive, that's what it means. If x is negative, that's what it means. Okay, let's look at the proof of the triangular inequality. It's very straightforward. Absolute, uh, absolute value of a plus b. If you square, it's equal to a plus b squared. That's the same thing because square of any uh, real number uh, is uh, positive, uh, which is now is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now here, a or b could be negative. So that's, that's a negative number, and this turns out to be a negative number. So it's always less than this. And then, uh, so absolute value of, square of the absolute value of A, two times the absolute value of A and absolute value of B, and square of the absolute value of B. So this is greater than this. I hope you can see it clearly because here, either or B may be a negative number, so there will be some subtraction from these positive numbers, so which is less than this. But now that's equal to uh, absolute value of A plus absolute value of B squared. So that leaves me this. 
you can just make an example. For instance, you take the absolute value of minus 3 plus 7, so that's equal to 4. But if you sum absolute value of minus 3 and absolute value of 7, that's 10. Here, 3 plus 7, the absolute value of 2 plus 7, 3 plus 7 is 10. And if you add absolute value of 3 and absolute value of 7, again, 10. So it's less than or equal to. 3 minus 7, that's 4. Again, the absolute value of 3 minus 7 is minus 4. Its absolute value is 4. So that's 3 plus 7, 10. So less than or equal to always uh, counts. Now let's look at solutions of equations, including absolute values. So if you have this equation, that's 2x minus 3, absolute value of 2x minus 3 is equal to 7. That means 2x minus 3 is equal to 7, or 2x minus 3 is equal to minus 7, because there are two options there, okay? Uh, that comes from here. So you have to solve both. Now, so if we solve the first one, x is equal to 5. Now, if we solve the second one, x is equal to minus 2. Now, so the equation of O has two sums. Since you have absolute value, that's the solution is either 5 or minus 2. There are no other options that you can have. Okay, some students complain about the sound. I'm trying to make it as loud as possible. Uh, probably you should, after the class is over, you should check the recording and see how, how the sound comes. There is nothing I can do right now because I can hear, I can see here that my sound is clearly going. Okay, let's uh, continue with the next slide. And now let's solve an inequality, which involves absolute values. Let's finish inequality, five minus two over x, less than one. Now that means that this quantity is less than one and greater than minus one. It must be greater than minus one in order for this to hold. So you have this inequality instead of this. Now what you can do is you can subtract five from each side. So you have this inequality minus minus four x is less than minus four. Now let's multiply by minus one each side. So this inequality is all reverse. So six is greater than two over x and uh, less than greater than two over x, which is greater than four. And if you divide everything by two here, then you have this inequality. Now what does this tell us? That uh, tells us x is greater than 1 over 2. If you look at this uh, in part of the inequality, you multiply by x and divide by 3 both sides here, and then x is greater than 1 over 2. Now, if you look at this side, if you divide by x, multiply by x, that tells you x is less than 1 over 2. So that's the uh, solution you get set is an open interval, x is greater than 1 over 3 and less than 1 over 2. Uh, let's look at another uh, inequality uh, which involves uh, absolute values. Here the first one is 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to 1. And the other uh, inequality is 2x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 1. Let's look at the first one. So that gives you this because 
this quantity 2x minus 3 must be less than or equal to 1 or greater than or equal to minus 1. Okay, so that's the inequality we get. We can add 2 each side. So we have 2 less than or equal to 2x, less than or equal to 2. So x is between 1 and 2. 1 and 2 are included. So that's a closed interval, 1, 2. That's the solution set. Now let's look at this one. Now this quantity, 2x minus 3, if it's positive, then it must be greater than or equal to 1. Now, but if it's negative, it must be less than the, or equal to minus 1. So we have two inequalities that comes from this uh, inequality. Minus 1 must be greater than t minus 3, or that's equivalent to, if you add 2, x must be less than 1. Uh, okay. If this is greater than 1, uh, then here, uh, if you add 3, that's 4, x is greater than 1. Here, x is uh, greater than uh, 2. Sorry, x is less than 1, x is greater than 1. Because the property tells me that if it's positive, this must be true. That tells me uh, that x is greater than 2. Now, if it's a negative number, then that tells me minus 1 must be greater than 2x minus 3. So uh, if you add 3 to both sides, that gives you x is less than 1. So the solution set is 2 infinity, which comes from this. 2 is included up to infinity because x is greater than 2 for the solution. Or if that's true, x must be between minus infinity and 1 because x is less than 1. That's why it's got up to this. Okay, so when you solve, uh, absolute uh, inequality is with absolute because absolute value uh, is. Uh, leads up to different inequalities. Okay, let's now give a break for uh, six minutes. We will come in at five past eleven, according to my watch, or four past uh, eleven. Meanwhile, refresh your uh, pages, and uh, I will close the and reopen again.